best car, SUV, or truck, guess what? You're in luck. Frontier Motors is down the street. Got the best deals that can't be beat. Don't overpay, come in today. Doing business the old fashioned way. Frontier, we've got the right price. Frontier, we'll treat you mighty nice. Frontier Motors, low overhead country. And that is what we'll be discussing for the remainder of this hour today. Low overhead country, to be precise. And we will be speaking with Ivan Streckel, who, of course, is the owner of that fine establishment. We're glad to have you with us, too, as well, folks. If you'd like to give us a call at 476-1007, 476-1007, you will be connected as if by magic with Mr. Streckel, who, of course, is with Frontier Motors. Good morning, sir. Hey, Don. Thanks so much for the introduction. We have, again, a double format, which means that we are live on the radio on AM and FM, WCOA. And we also are tape recording this for our uh, TV viewers out there in the Pensacola area and uh, we bring the show to you going on 18 years now for Frontier Motors talking about what uh, Frontier Motors does for the community to help people out and uh, well, one of the things that we do is we give values on cars and I'm not talking about internet values you know if you get the internet you can put a value in there and you'll or ask for used car prices and you'll get an NEDA you'll get uh, Kelly Blue Book and Edmonds and we used to use something a little bit different because sometimes the books are way off and uh, when you use an NEDA book like this one right here this is the books that the banks and the credit unions use, and some of the insurance companies also use this to value the car in case you have a total loss. And sometimes this book is right on, sometimes it's way off. So you want to find out if you're on or off, you call Frontier Motors at 436-8080, or you can join us on the show. Don, what's the phone number? Uh, that phone number is 476-1007, 476-1007, add 888 to that if you want to make a toll-free call. And that's if you're watching this, actually, that's if you're listening to this on the radio right now, because if you're watching this on TV, it's a pre-recorded show, and of course, you'd want to call Frontier Motors at uh, uh, 436-8080 to get that value. We've got 11 salespeople and four managers standing by to help you with those values, and uh, some of the books that we use also are the Black Wholesale Guidebooks. These are the books that they kind of call the secret books in the car industry. Most dealerships won't share this information with you because it kind of tells you what the dealer should have paid for a particular car. And I'll use this as an example. Here's a 2009 Honda Pilot. I'm opening up to an EXL model. It says average wholesale is 17450 and clean wholesale is 19450 So there's a $2,000 gap between average and clean. Just use the middle of that. It would be eighteen five. Um, so if that's what the wholesale is, what should you pay for it? Well, what if the wholesale is eighteen five, but this NED guidebook says that the retail is $25,000? Well, unfortunately, dealers don't mark up their car $7,000. Actually, they could if the retail was $25,000. There's nothing to say that there's a law against marking up to retail or even over retail for that matter. But what you do is you call Frontier Motors, and if I'm thinking hey, wholesale is eighteen five, dollars let's say it costs me seven or 800 maybe even $1,000 to buy the car uh, at an auction. Um, in Orlando, for example, it costs about $300 to ship it. The auction fee is about $400. Think about three or $400 uh, uh, to set it up and figure $300 for the buyer that buys for me so you have to take that into consideration when I'm putting the value out so if the wholesale value is 18.5 Let's say I have 19.5 in it. When I get it back home, let's say I mark it up $2,000. That's 21.5. Well, what if this book says it's worth 25,000? You'd be paying too much money, and that's why you call Frontier Motors if you're going to be buying a car for from a, re a relative or maybe a friend or somebody at work, or maybe if even on Craigslist or eBay or anywhere another car dealership for that matter. Give us a description of the car. If you've got the ID number, that helps. Of course, the mileage would help. Even the color is important. When you call a banker, they use this NEDA book. They never ask you the color of the car. Well, I'm taking one of our Lexus uh, uh, back to the auction today. I've had the vehicle for about 100 days, and I can't figure out why I can't sell it because it's under warranty. It has 20,000 miles on it because it's silver with black leather interior. And I've talked to three people that want a Lexus. They just don't want that color combination. And guess what? The book on that car is the same whether it's pearl white with a light interior or whether it's black with a black interior and in the used car industry color makes a difference I read in automotive news the other day that the number one color in the United States was white the number one color in the world last year for cars uh, used cars was silver um, so, actually, silver is a very good color, but on the Lexus, I guess the black leather somewhat uh, kills the sale of the car. At least uh, that must be my opinion because I can't figure out what else has it sold. I've got the car priced properly. 
And every once in a while, we get a car like that on the lot where we're looking at ourselves and we're trying to figure out, why isn't this car flying off the shelf? Frontier Motors has 300 cars in inventory. Well, if 10% of them uh, don't sell, that's 30 cars that I'm going to take uh, and price down to the wholesale value. I rarely ever take a car and sell it at the auction. I would rather give you a good deal out there that's listening or watching to the show by dropping the price close to wholesale. And this Lexus I'm talking about is a, is a prime example that can be sold even though it's heading to the auction because one of my buyers drives to the Orlando auction every Tuesday, so I give him one car to sell. So that's about four cars a month is about my limit that I sell at the auction because we don't send anything to the auctions. I would rather reduce the price. And that car can be pre-sold. We don't have to run at the auction. So right now, this is a car that's about a $37,000 car that I've got it down to thirty two five. dollars um, Of course, by tomorrow, it might end up being sold. But you can call right now at Frontier Motors and you can get a deal on that car by being able to buy it for wholesale. A lot of things that we offer at Frontier Motors, we talked about the values. That's, I think, probably the biggest thing. And this value uh, program that we have is really important if you're going to buy a brand new car. Um, and if you buy a brand new car, not only can we tell you the invoice on that brand new car, which if you buy it, if you get an invoice from uh, Consumer Supports, they charge $14. I've got a Consumer Supports magazine right here. And on the back of it, it tells you how to get an invoice on the car. And they tell you that um, for $14, they'll see, sell you an invoice. And for any additional invoice, it's $12. Well, what if you're looking at 10 different cars? You want 10 different invoices. You're talking about $140 or $120 you've got to pay. Frontier Motors will give you the invoice at no charge. We subscribe to all the new car gui guides, new car cost guides, so I can tell you the invoice of any car, and that might be helpful if you're trying to negotiate yourself the best deal. Not that you're going to be able to buy it for an invoice, but uh, you should be able to get as close as possible. Um, so you've got uh, some ammunition when you walk in a new car dealership. But I think more importantly, than that, we will help you get a real wholesale value on your trade-in. So let's say you decide to buy a brand new Lexus and you're going to go to Lexus and Mobile and they give you a good deal on a brand new Lexus. Let's say it's a $45,000 car and let's say you get them down to $40,000. You feel that, wow, that's a pretty good price. I've checked with a couple of other dealers. Nobody will do it. That $40,000 is a good deal. And then you toss in the keys for the trade-in. Well, what if they appraise it for $10,000, but I'm appraising it for $13,000? It's going to either force them to go to higher appraisal or you can just sell the car directly to me, better yet, you could trade it in there and I'll buy it right from the dealer. It'll save you some taxes because if they uh, if they give you $14,000 off the $40,000 price, then you only pay the, the tax on the difference. If you don't have a trade-in, you've got to pay the tax on the $40,000. And I can kind of sit down with you and tell you what the tax ramifications are of having a trade-in and where the cutoff is, whether you, whether you should sell your car yourself, sell it to me, or go ahead and trade it in. The advantage of selling at the Frontier Motors, of course, is we'll just write you a check and you're done so you can shop at your leisure. And I can even let you drive that car until you pick out the new one. So it doesn't have to be a deal that has to be done today. Normally, I'll give you seven days and a thousand miles, which means that you can still go shopping at your leisure. And you never know. Maybe if you stop in a Frontier Motors, uh, we'll have the Lexus of your dreams there if you're going to buy a Lexus. And we just sold a 2013 RX 350 the other day, and it had 3,000 miles on it. We sold an ES350, which is the new uh, car, absolutely beautiful car that the 2013 ES350 is, they've uh, changed the body style. Very good looking car, much better, uh, not that the old one was ugly, but the new one's even better looking. And we just sold one of those on Saturday, and I think that car had maybe 5,000 miles on it. So uh, I'm just giving you an example that what we offer at Frontier Motors, not just giving the price and buying a car, we also give you uh, a selection that is uh, uh, probably very unique in our area that you can come to one dealer, and if you're not sure what you want, let's use Lexus as an example, let's say you want look at a, an RX350, which is their sport utility. But you're really not sure if that's the one you want. Well, we also have the Infinity version of that, which is called an FX35. We have the EX35, which is also Infinity. Then if you go flip over to BMW, you can look at an X5 or an X3 model. If you go over to uh, the Ford version, we have the Ford Explorer and the Ford Escape and the Ford Edge. How about the Lincoln, which is the MKX and the, MK, uh, the MKZ? So we have them all lined up there, uh, whether it be domestics or import. And instead of going to six different dealerships, if you're looking at six different body styles, you can go to one dealer, you can test drive them all, and even if we don't have exactly the car that fits your needs, maybe the color is wrong, or maybe it's got, uh, uh, maybe it's too too expensive because it's a 2013, you want to drop down to a 2011 or 10, then we flip over to our locate program, which means we go on the internet at the auctions, and there's 13 Manham auctions that we attend in our area, and we buy that car for you. Sometimes we can find a car within three or four days. Sometimes if you're real specific, it takes a little bit longer. I've got a customer 
customer right now looking for a Suburban, but they have to have the quad seating, they have to have leather interior, and it has to be dark leather interior. Here I'm telling you I can't sell a Lexus with black leather, and here I have a customer walking in. We have two Suburbans in stock. They both have light leather interior, but uh, she wants a dark leather interior, so I'm going to go locate that car um, uh, with exactly the equipment and the color that they want. I've already given them a price. If they have a trade-in, I try to get the trade-in information out of the way because I hate to appraise a car for 20000 and you want 25000 so I immediately will tell you what the trade-in value is worth. I also give you the bottom line. So if we have the retail at, let's say you're looking at a retail price of $40,000 and I give you a trade-in of 20000 well then the bottom line price is $20,000 if you subtract that. And then I'll give you the out-the-door price in writing, which includes the taxes, the county taxes, the dock fee, the tag transfer, the title fee. Uh, all those fees are going to be on there and then we circle that bottom line. And the reason we do that is because if you're going to go shopping, Instead of concentrating on the trade-in or concentrating on the list price, the discount, and concentrating on who's got the lowest dock fee or who charges the lowest fees, all that stuff is immaterial. The only thing that really matters is what's that bottom line. And if I give you that one price, let's say I say I can trade you into a 2013 Lexus RX350, or we're talking about the Suburban. Let's say it's a 2013 uh, Suburban, and I tell you I can give you this vehicle for 22500 out the door. Now, out the door means everything, Sorry, no hidden fees. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that everything is included. And you don't. And some dealers will put the taxes on there, but they won't tell you about the dock fee. They won't tell you about the title fee or the tag transfer. Or if you're buying a brand new tag, then they won't tell you that. So you want to make sure that you get the proper information from that dealer. I always say if they won't give it in writing, they're hiding something. So if you're, if you're flipping across a dealer that says, well, I can do this for about $25,000. No, 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 no. That's not going to work. You want them to give you a detailed outline of how they get the $25,000 and you want to have them sign it. At Frontier Motors, when I give you an out-the-door figure, I sign it. That figure is good for seven days. Actually, the figure is good as long as you don't wreck your car if you've got to trade it, and as long as my car is not sold in the meantime. And the most frustrating thing for most customers is I give them a figure on the car, they go stumble all over the south uh, looking at car, de uh, car dealerships to find out I had the best possible deal. They come back four days later, and of course the car is sold. Then they get very disjointed, and they get very, uh, uh, they get very negative, and they don't want to start over. But the advantage that I have is I'm going to go out and replace that car, even if that does happen. So at Frontier Motors, we try to make, we try to do the right thing. And the right thing is doing it and making it easy to buy a car. People, I've got this, I've got this article in Automotive News. It says the Federal uh, Federal Trade uh, Communication targets stores with deceptive ads. Nine retailers settle charges. The agency says more cases are in the pipeline. And it said that, Unfortunately, knock on wood, none of these are here. They're starting up north and heading uh, to California. Uh, expect more scrutiny from the Federal Trade Commission of auto dealerships advertising after nine states agreed to settle charges of deceptive ad practices. And as a dealership that doesn't run a sale, Frontier Motors, you're never going to see. You see these billboards on the side of the road on the expressway, $15,995. I'm not going to mention the name of the car they're advertising. It's actually not even the dealer. It's not even a franchise. They're advertising used cars. But number one, they tell you 2013, $15,995. But they don't tell you that it's a used 13. They don't tell me how, they, how many they have in stock. And they also, you can't read the fine print. In other words, is that with $2,500 down? You hear that all the time. That, you know, where, they, where you got to have a, a trade-in worth $2,500. Or you have to have $2,500 in cash to get, that, to get that lower price. Well, heck, why don't they advertise a car for $5,900 with $15,000 down in cash? It's just as deceptive as far as I'm concerned. They don't advertise the car plus the fees. Now, they might have on their C dealer for details, and that's why these dealers on this uh, in this Federal Trade Commission are getting in trouble because they see they have a little asterisk on their C, C the dealer for details. That's illegal, folks. You have to actually spell it out. And if you freeze frame or TiVo, uh, a TV commercial, and you start reading all the garbage, you'd never go and check out their car because you get so frustrated. And the other thing that they got in trouble for is advertising rebates that you'll never qualify for. Because a lot of rebates can can not be used in, in conjunction with each other. In other words, uh, when I was selling new cars years ago, it was kind of comical because they had a farmer's rebate, they had a college graduate rebate, they had a first-time buyer's rebate, they had a military rebate, they had a uh, they had a goodwill uh, rebate. I don't know what that is. I remember they senior citizen rebate. Senior citizen rebate. They did. They had Old a senior guy rebate. Yeah, you would get that for sure, Don. They have a. Uh, they have a uh, what do they call that? If you if you have a model uh, um, 
just like the one you're trading in. So you get a rebate if you have, if you're buying an Oldsmobile and you have an Oldsmobile to trade, they give you an extra rebate on that. Well, you couldn't qualify for all those rebates. Of course, those rebates added up to be $10,000. And, and you walk in there and you get a five thousand dollar rebate. You say, "Wait a minute, it's not what the ad says." Well, you know, you don't qualify for this one, this one, this one. Illegal, very illegal. I did see a billboard. They're not running it anymore. But two years ago, they had a billboard on the expressway, and it was a Hyundai billboard. It was not Alan Turner's. It was I would think it might have been Hampton. I'm not. I'm not really sure. But the, but it said, "Buy this Elantra for ten nine. And I actually pulled over the side of the road to see um, what the fine print says. And guess what, folks? They didn't have any fine print. And I was advertising. I I, I, I did the radio show. The TV show back then because we've been doing it for, like I said, going on 18 years now. And I told people, I says, go to that dealership and demand to buy the car for the advertised price because it's a bargain. I can't sell you a used one for that price. I'm not sure how many people took us up on it because it's very illegal to advertise a car. And they said new. They didn't say just a, a one car, like a used car with 30,000 miles on it. It was a brand new car uh, advertised for, I think it was 109. And uh, I, I noticed one thing, they're not doing it anymore because I'm not sure if anybody ever took me up on what I told them. Go down there and demand to see the car. And if you don't, then you call the Federal Trade Commission, and they'll make that dealer sell the car for that price. Now, that includes taxes, title, doc fee, everything, because they didn't have the little asterisk that says, see dealer for details, which is illegal, but who knows, they might have been able to get away with it. But I'm glad to see that the Federal Trade Commission is, uh, is uh, coming down on dealers hard. And uh, I'll tell you what, folks, uh, these fines on here, they're not twenty dollars or $30,000. They, they're up in the millions. I mean, these are big dealerships that are doing this, and what they're trying to do is, actually, it's, I'm exaggerating a little bit, 16000 per day for as long as the ad runs. So if you ran an ad for 30 days, I don't have my calculator on, but you take 30 days times 16000 per day, that could be close to a million dollars. It adds up real quick, like doesn't it? Frontier Motors located at 230 Beverly Parkway. We are the people that help you buy a car, whether you buy it from us or not. I know it sounds kind of stupid. Here, I'm a car dealership telling you that I'm going to help you buy a car somewhere else, and we really do that. We give advice, whether you buy from us or not. Now, the reason we do this, we've been doing this for a long time. It's working out for us. We're the number one independent dealership uh, on the Gulf Coast. We sell about 200 cars a month. And the reason we do that is because our customers come in because we've helped them buy cars at other dealerships. So if you found a car at uh, another dealer and you want to know if it's got a clean history report, I'm not sure if you know this, folks, but Carfax right now charges $39 for a history report. Now, I think you can run four or five of them. It's not just for one, but that's 39 bucks. That's a lot. I subscribe to Carfax and AutoCheck, so I pay them one monthly fee. I can run as many as I want. So if you're buying a car from another car dealership that won't uh, give you the Carfax, and this happened the other day, a local big dealer, franchise dealer, not going to mention the name, sold the car six months ago, so it was a pickup truck, sold a used pickup truck six months ago, and I praised the car for the customer because they want something even bigger than what they have. I think it was a 1500 and they wanted a 2500 diesel, so I did the appraisal, and when I did the car fax, it says, major accident reported, airbags deployed, uh, structural damage. Folks, that's, that's pretty big. They bought this truck. It was a relatively new truck. I think it was a two-year-old truck with 40,000 miles on it. And I asked them, the, the salesman asked them, didn't you run a Carfax before you bought it? Well, no, we didn't. But the dealer did. And they said it wasn't a minor fender bender. Folks, this thing's all twisted up. It's got frame damage. Don't you think that affects the value of the car? I had the value of the car almost 3000 It's called diminished value. We're gonna, if we took that truck and trade, which we're not going to because they paid so much money for it and they lost so much money because of the diminished value, I'm not paying, I'm not paying a, a big money. Who's going to buy that vehicle for me? If I'm going to sell it to someone, it better pass inspection, and I'm going to let you know about it. I'm going to give you the Carfax. By the way, all of our cars, our 300 cars, the Carfax on the, on the auto check is in the glove box. So the customer Another dealer said it was a minor fender bender, but they never want the next step. Say, show me the Carfax. Like you see in that commercial, show me the Carfax. At Frontier Motors, we'll show you the Carmax, Carfax, and we'll also uh, give it to you uh, on another dealer's lot. If you if you see another uh, a, a car on another dealer's lot, we'll give you their Carfax, too, if they won't give it to you. But it makes a difference, folks. And if I'm going to sell a car to a customer that's got structural damage, boy, it better be a good car. It better have been fixed at the right place, and it better be a bargain because you're not going to buy it. If I, if the, the, what were they looking for? They were looking at a bigger diesel truck. And, I, and the, what I, I, they said, well, this shouldn't affect the value that much. Well, I'll tell you what. What if my diesel truck had airbags deployed, major accident, structural damage? How much would you pay? Well, oh, I'd pay you the same. You would not. You definitely would not. You probably wouldn't even buy it. You'd walk away.
But for those people that are looking for a bargain, there are car dealerships, believe it or not, that do business in salvage titles. That's all they sell, salvage title cars. And I just read Automotive News that it used to be, when we were uh, appraising cars years ago, if they had a total loss, in other words, they were uh, flood damage or odometer problems or they were in such a bad wreck that the insurance company totaled them, but yet a body shop put the car back together and sold it, it usually was 50% of the value. They're down to 33% of the value. So if you got a $10,000 value car, it should sell for $10,000. If it's got a total loss, it sells for $3,300. Well, guess what, folks? If it's a good car, if it was fixed at a major body shop, that $3,300 is a pretty good bargain. So there are people that will buy that car, but it has to be a deal. Now, a normal accident, if it's a minor accident, there's no diminished value. People call me all the time because we're the only dealership that puts diminished value in writing. In other words, last uh, last week I did, I think it was either three or four diminished values. And I do this for the customers so they can go back to the insurance company and say, hey, I got this real nice car here. I just had a $7,000 accident. Somebody broadsided me. If it's your fault, they won't give you diminished value. But if somebody broadsides you, the other insurance company has to pay some type of diminished value because the value of the car is worth a little bit less if it's been in a, in a, in a pretty good accident, especially if it's a newer car. Now, if you got a 2001 Camry with 160,000 miles on it and you had $2,000 worth of damage uh, six months ago, there's no diminished value, folks. That car's not worth that much anyways. But if you got a 2013 Camry, it's got 5,000 miles on it, has $6,000 damage on it, yes, there is diminished value. Because if I took that car in trade, the only way I would took that car in trade is to inspect it, make sure it was done properly, fixed properly. And number two, to make sure I get good enough of a bargain where I can sell you that car. And you say, you know, for that price, i buy the car. Because if you can walk across the street to the Toyota dealership and get one that hasn't been an accident, why would you buy that car from me if I happen to have that car? It has to be cheap. Now, some customers, of course, uh, will take advantage of that. And I've had, uh, like I said, I, I'm the only one that puts it right. I actually had a customer last week that was going to go buy a brand new car, uh, the wife wouldn't let him buy a used one. I had a 2013 on the, on the lot. I'm not going to mention the, the dealer that, that was selling them a car, but I had a 2013 with really low miles on She said, no, I'm going to buy brand new. So I said, well, why don't you go to that dealership and tell them to give you diminished value? They won't do it. <laughs> they, sent, they actually sent the customer Frontier Motors because we're the only ones that will sign it. The insurance company won't do it if you give, give an opinion. I do an appraisal and say, here's the appraisal without diminished value. Here's the appraisal with diminished value. Here's how much I think the value of the car has dropped. It's my opinion. That that's all it is, an opinion, because there's no formula. I just tell you, depending on the car and the, and the resale value of the car, how much it's worth. So anyways, take us up on that if you got a car that's a total loss. Some people don't even know what that means. And a diminished value, diminished value is a thing that you should be getting paid for if uh, somebody broadsides you and it's not your fault. Like I said, if it is your fault, you're not going to get um, you're not going to get any money. We subscribe to Consumers Reports. Don't pay for it. Come on in. Uh, sit down. Have a cup of coffee. We'll go over the Consumers Reports with you. It's really kind of cool because it has crash tests in there. A lot of people are a lot more safety conscious than there used to be. And uh, safety, big. Uh, the, the nice thing is most of the newer cars have five-star uh, crash tests. But you want to take a look at the side crash. I don't know what the deal is. When I moved to Pensacola about 20 years ago, um, I'm from the uh, Wisconsin area, and we didn't have as many people running red lights as they, I don't know if they, if you're, if that's something that they just do down here, if it's a game or whatever, but I see people getting broadsided right and left. And I have customers that come in getting diminished value. I said, what happened? Guy ran a light. And this comes over and over. Ran a light, ran a light, ran a light. I don't know what the deal is, Don. I mean, is that something that's in the South? What's the deal? Uh, yes, it's an old truth. Well, it's an old tradition down here. Yeah, they, they do a really good job with it. Uh, Apparently yeah. so. I, and I guess maybe that's why they're taking pictures now of people uh, running these lights because they want to put a stop to it. I'm not sure if it's working or not. I know there's a big controversy of whether uh, that's a good thing or not uh, by having uh, the cameras uh, uh, taking pictures of people running red lights. I think, uh, personally, in my opinion, I think it's a good thing. I don't like uh, people getting broadsided, but what I'm getting at, folks, is side airbags. In Pensacola, you need them. Don't just get front airbags. It's not going to help you if somebody runs a red light and broadsides you. You want to get side airbags. And we have the list of cars that have side airbags. Now, some cars, like the older Civics, for example, like a, I think it was a 2010 Civic, you could get them with or without side airbags. It was an option. Very interesting. So you, I, cause I, I didn't know this until a customer came in and said, I'm not buying your car because I had one on the lot, didn't have side airbags. I said, well, then they don't come with it because Civics don't have options. Well, guess what? They do. That's the only option you can get. It's actually a different model. They have one with outside airbags, one with side airbags. And if you're going to put a young kid in a car, if it's a first-time buyer, try to be able to get one with side airbags. It's just it's a, a, a really cool idea there. If you can't afford one with side airbags because you got to go to a newer car, make sure you get a uh, car that's got a good crash rating, and we can help you that because we have the consumer supports.
the automotive news thing really gives me some cool information. And one of the things that we talked about is uh, is uh, that we talk about is how many cars were sold. And I don't know, folks. I don't know if you know this or not. People always ask me, what's your number one selling vehicle? The number one selling one vehicle that we have the Frontier Motors is the number one selling vehicle uh, in the United States, which is Don. You know the answer to this, don't you? The number one selling vehicle in the United States used to be the F one fifty. It still, still is. The F-150 is the number one selling vehicle in the United States. Phenomenal truck. And now, they have, for 2015, they're changing the body style of the F-150. Uh, they've already come out with the new Chevy truck. New, the Dodge is right around the corner. And uh, the Ford has been uh, changed. It's a beautiful-looking truck. And uh, right now, it's really hard to pick a truck. Whether you want a Chevy, a new body style Chevy is, uh, is gorgeous. Or if you want to get uh, an F-150, <clears throat> the Dodge is one of my favorite trucks. It's really hard to pick. Nissan's really kind of slumped down a little bit. They don't sell a lot of Nissan Titans, even though it's got a pretty good reputation. And, of course, the Tundra has always got one of the best reputations ever if you want to go with Tundra. Nice thing, uh, we're going to talk about it one more time. Nice thing about being an independent dealership, when you come to Frontier Motors, let's say you come to Frontier Motors and you're looking at a full-size truck. And I show you Dodge because <clears throat> you want to have 2013 with low miles. I've got two Dodges, what they call them Rams now. I've got two Rams on the lot. They both have one has 4,000 miles, one has 3,000 miles. And you say, I don't really want a, 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 a Chrysler product or a Dodge product. You know, if I was a Chrysler dealer, I'd be offended because I can't tell condition because mine's in perfect condition, but the pictures look really good. So I can't really say that there's as good or bad condition until you go and look at it. But let's say there's a price higher and you know I'm already lower. And most of the time these days, folks, <clears throat> when you see a price on the internet, it's not like the old days where, hey, I can get them to knock off another $3,000. Dealers aren't stupid. They're not going to advertise their cars on the internet at a price if they're overpriced because you'll never call them. You'll never come in. So you can pretty much tell that the price on there is going to be real close to the actual selling price, which makes my job easier if I've got a low price. And when I share that information with a the customer, they say, okay, I'll take it. And most of the time that happens if it's a previous customer. If it's a, somebody who's never heard of Frontier Motors, they're always going to be skeptical because we're just a car dealership. We are out to change the reputation of car dealership, and hopefully we're doing a good job at it. We want people to come in and not be pressured to buy a car. We want people to, to feel comfortable that they can buy when they're ready. We want people to be able to, able to get a price and not be asked stupid questions like, what do you want to pay? What do you want your payments to be? You know, all these things. So that's completely idiotic as far as I'm concerned. And that's why a lot of people don't like buying cars because they don't like that whole process. At Frontier motors we make the process fun we make it easy and we'll show you and you'll be able to find out within a matter of minutes if we're if what we say is actually happening a lot of car dealerships advertise this but it doesn't happen when you get down in the trenches on the showroom it's always well what can i do to sell you a car today what do i got to give you for your car to make this thing happen today it's always today 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 at frontier motors of course we'd love you to buy today but you don't need to we're going to give you information so you can shop around to make a good decision. And that's why we've been going on going on 18 years now, have been the number one dealership in our area for uh, for a long time. And, and, and our folks, our sales are, are really good. And the reason they're really good is because we have the inventory and we do things the right way. You're, you're only going to know if you give us a try. 230 Beverly Parkway is Frontier Motors. We've got a great website. Just Google Frontier Motors. We've got 300 cars inventory, tw uh, 31 detailed photographs of every car on the Internet. And every one of them has a price. Now, the ones that might not have a price, is maybe something that I bought, but it's just uh, but we haven't stocked it in yet. So sometimes I actually buy them. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but auction owns Auto Trader. So when you buy one at the auction, it immediately goes on our website without a price because I don't know the price yet before the car even hits the lot. Sometimes we have customers calling. Now what about this car? I don't know. The car's not here yet. Well, we just bought it. But Auto Trader it goes right on. We, we advertise AutoTraderCar.com and ten different websites. Bunch of motors. Come and see us. Four three six eighty eighty. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. I'll do the same.